Hi guys, welcome to an instalment at Luger's Garage where we're going to be looking at the uh, new Z and X axes I've um, designed and made for the Shapiko 3 um, along with that and my water-cooled spindle. We're not really going to focus on the spindle, we're just going to talk about the uh, Z and X, X axes. So as many of you will know, you have um, uh, belt-driven Z and X axes similar to this uh, on your Shapiko and it's a very good and very capable um, bit of kit. In all fairness, it is difficult to fold it. Um, now, one of the reasons I wanted to change, well, actually, I suppose going back, there's three reasons why I wanted to change. Uh, the first one being that it's belt driven, and I find that when I'm drilling or sorry, milling lots of thick pieces of aluminium, I typically get lots of chips flying up um, and getting stuck in to the, uh, the belt, which then causes it to skip uh, steps. Uh, and crash and as an example this is a piece of 20 mil thick aluminium which I milled um, actually part of uh, a Z the X axes come uh, a bit and after milling you know quite a fair chunk around the outside bits got stuck in the belt it skipped a step when it was moving upwards crashed into the side and wrecked the piece um, and I had that happening uh, a few probably too often to be honest uh, it was starting to frustrate me uh, another reason was I wanted the additional height, um, so the ability to mill higher up uh, and use larger mounting points because I typically will use a clamp to mount on smaller items of stock, especially when I'm working on um, very small components. Um, and the last reason I wanted to change it, and this is because I've upgraded the machine, um, and it's not something which I'd say is a, a fault with the machine, is that my water-cooled spindle is heavy. I mean, it's, it's not a light bit of kit. It probably weighs at least five kilos in itself, uh, whereas the DeWalt router weighs two and a half. Now, because I've increased the weight of that, um, every time I turned off the machine, you would have the, the spindle just shooting down into the, uh, into the base plate. It never hit the base plate, but it was coming too close to my liking. And whilst I upgraded the springs a couple of times, it wasn't um, fantastic in my eyes. I mean, I could have done better. Now, just talking a little bit about ball screws. Uh, so this is the mechanism that drives it. This is a 25 mil ball screw. And this is actually the whole reason why it took me so long to design and build this. Now, a 25 mil ball screw, 20, uh, 25 centimeter ball screw, you would assume, I suppose, would have 25 centimeters of travel, but it, it simply doesn't. If you look at this, you've got the ends. So you've got one end, which is about a centimeter, another end, which is almost seven on this one. So that's reducing it automatically by eight centimeters. Um, at that same point, you also have to take into account the item which is being mounted. For example, if you've got a 10 centimeter plate and you've got 20 centimeters of travel, you can actually only move that 10 centimeters. Um, and I believe I did measure it when I built it first time around with a 25 centimeter ball screw. It had around about nine centimeters worth of travel, which just wasn't quite enough for what I was asking or I wanted. Uh, it was too close to the, the standard Shapiko uh, movement. And I wanted to improve on this. Um, the, I then tried a 40 centimeter version. I had the same issue, but it was actually too big. Um, and again, I've upgraded my enclosure once this year. I didn't really want to do it again, just to change this. So I actually opted to have one custom made. Um, I had it made in China. It's 30 centimeters long and it only has a 30 mil end at one side, so at that side I've got 30 mil, and that side it's got 10. And weirdly, to have one custom made costs less than a 25 mil one, it costs about 12 pound, including shipping to the UK, which is unbelievably cheap. I mean, it's hard to make that up. Um, now, looking at the axes itself, it is slightly different. So if we go face on here, have a little look at some of the features. So the first thing to note is it's actually a lot slimmer then the original axes, the original Z and X, well, sorry, X axes is about 15 centimeter, whereas this one's 12. Now, the reason I did this is I wanted to have a slightly more movement on the X direction. However, what I didn't uh, expect is that carbide motion does not have the ability to change its soft limits in the software to uh, say to uh, say assume that it's got the movement so essentially carbide motion says okay you can move let's say it's 38 centimeters from here to here 
but you can't change that pass there. It also applies to the z-axis, so you can't move it further down than you'd need to go. Now that's an issue, um, not with carbide motion, it's an issue when you modify machines to another level like this, uh, which is what I've done. So I've now had to start using universal G-code sender, and I guess I'm now um, I'm tied to that, so I need to learn it pretty fast. Anyway, I've um, say just uh, say got that open now and connected the machine and done a quick homing cycle on it and moved it around a little bit. Now, as I said, I wanted to have it so it had more movement, but the other thing I also did is wanted to make sure that these nuts are extra tight. Now, the standard distance between uh, the two V wheels is 107 millimeters. Now, with that, I mean, realistically, um, that to me just seemed like a little bit too much and possibly more room than I needed, so I lowered it to 106. Uh, it's a bit snugger, but it, it does mean it's got a tighter adjustment. Um, obviously, it also takes into account that there might be a slight variation in my machine, etc. Now, there is absolutely zero movement when you're going like that. So it's nice and sturdy, which is, is pretty good. Um, I haven't tested milling anything yet, but I will I will do very shortly. Now, one thing that's quite cool, I say if I just move it left, you can see it is smooth as butter when it's moving across. You know, there's no issues there, uh, and it handles that very nicely. So I'm quite pleased at the X movement. Now, the Z movement, again, is nice and smooth um, because it is ball screw it's got a, I say a nice smooth movement and that was at 2000 millimeters a minute so the one thing i would say is if you do do this you need to be prepared to limit yourself um, if i try and move this down at 5000 millimeters a minute it overloads the stepper and it doesn't like that but 2000 it seems fine so you can see that moved down nice and easily now if we move it back up at 500 just to see sort of that, that smooth movement again 5,500, and we go up. Hopefully I didn't just click that twice, or we'll be doing a new video. So there you go, going up. Nice and smooth. Now, it's a pretty rock solid, um, uh, say, build I mean I can't move it with my hands there will be the ultimate test of when I actually use the thing um, now there are a couple of reasons why I didn't just go and buy a CNC newbie version because I know that is available uh, one of which is I thought it was a slightly lazy approach to mount it to an existing plate when the existing plate is just an axis it's, and I thought well I could do slightly better than that um, and it was just one of those things which didn't really float my boat but the other reason was I wanted to have a um, small amount of uh, uh, say adjustment in the machine so you'll often see people say they've got ridges and pieces and it's because the spindle isn't exactly straight so it's either left right forward or backwards and I thought well actually I could adjust this if I had access holes and you do actually have them on the original Shapiko axes and I was using those um, but it's very difficult to do when you've got four bolts instead of two on this uh, large spindle so what I did is drilled, or say milled, four large or extra large holes here, so I can actually um, uh, adjust it, and I've got full control over left and right movement, and then obviously you can use shims for forward and backward. Um, now I suppose the only other thing worth mentioning on this, um, before I pack it up and save that as one, uh, one little video, is that I've made mine upgradable as well. Now thinking about the Shapiko, it's very good, but what happens if I say I want to do the x-axis now and make that ball drive? Well, I don't want to have to make, remake all of this. So what I've done is to give additional clearance, the actual brackets and the linear assembly can be moved down by 14 millimeters, which will put this straight in line with the bottom of the, um, the uh, so the bracket. I've then already pre-milled in, uh, I don't know, in expectation I probably will do this at some point, mounting holes for the additional um, uh, driver pulleys etc uh, on there so essentially my linear guide can be also milled in the exact same fashion it is now flipped on its side and be used in the x axis but obviously it needs to be larger for the main plate but the z axis accepts this already 
just because I'm you know, trying to future proof it. I really don't want to have to do this twice if I don't have to, it's costly, it wastes time, etc. But it was a small enhancement. I thought, oh, well, let's just do it. Um, now, I mean, that's pretty much it. I can't really show you any more um, at this moment in time. We've gone through, you know, why I've done it, the type of ball screw I've used, and also, you know, its general function. Um, really, it's a case of there's proof in the pudding. Let's have a go milling something. And I hope to do that over the weekend. I haven't had time at the moment. Um, anyway, just, you know, one more movement up. So it's beautiful and smooth. And then we do another one to the left. I do need to calibrate this still. Um, at the moment, I've set it to 200 millimeters, sorry, 200 micro steps per millimeter, which I think is about correct. But I do need to calibrate that and just ensure it's spot on. Um, at the moment, I'm not 100% sure that it is, but it looks about correct. But you get the idea, it moves around. Now, I suppose it might be worth me showing you uh, what happens when I turn it off because anyone with a, a large spindle, even a DeWalt, will know it does drop slightly and that's what the springs are there to stop it from falling. And in a way, that's probably the main weakness of the um, standard axes. I'll just wait for it to finish that and I'll turn it off so you can see what happens. Should have moved it slightly faster. So I'll just turn my power switch. Shabik is off. You know what happened? Nothing. The five kilo spindle didn't move a fraction, which is absolutely perfect, which means hopefully no more uh, possibilities hitting the wasteboard. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope that's been useful and given you an insight into the, uh, the creative mind that is mine. Um, and uh, have a great day. Cheers.